What what was your before we get back to Bears Panthers? Give me your big takeaway about the current state of the NFL in Germany and what you think the future is. And is Germany, in your estimation, more likely to get a team before London? Mike, I'm just, uh, I, I would bet, I, you may live to see teams in Europe, but you know what I think they're going to do? I think, okay, so next year, five games. All right, three in England, one in Germany, and one in either Spain or Brazil. All right, and then I think starting in 25 or 26, you're going to start to see it ratchet up. The most significant thing I can say from a news standpoint, all right, while I was there, Mark Donovan, the president of Kansas City, I was on that Chiefs championship boat uh, this 250-foot, three-story yacht that uh, might even be good enough for Daniel Snyder to step on. Uh, th- this, this incredible boat that, that Kansas City had fitted and painted and, and all that, and I'm sorry, wrapped, not painted in red. And Mark Donovan said to me, he goes, we don't want to wait eight years. We know what the NFL rules say, Okay. We don't want to wait eight years. We want to come back sooner than that. And Mike, you might say, oh my God, you know, Andy Reid rolling his eyes about this and all that. But progressive NFL owners, progressive NFL teams are going to look at playing games and establishing a beachhead in football mad areas like Germany. Kansas City has already spent $3 million dollars on promotions, uh, on it, it, Mike, I'm telling you, that city was had to be 80 to 90 percent Kansas City fans, both in who those who came over for the game from the U.S. and those who live there. And it's natural, isn't it? They've won two Super Bowls in the last four years. They have Patrick Mahomes. They have Mr. Taylor Swift, and so it's going to be an incredibly popular team. And so I think as I look at this, um, remember Mike, 10 years ago, they, every year they would say, well, we're trying to convince the Packers to come over. We're trying to convince this team to come over. And we'd like to see this player play over in England or play, you know, in Mexico, whatever. And time after time, after time, I remember going to league meetings and people would say, yeah, we're talking to Green Bay. We want to convince them and everything. So finally, they passed the rule. Once every eight years, minimum, you got to give up a home game and you got to play overseas. But I'm telling you, the big difference in the last year or so is that teams are saying, hey, we want to go. We would like to go over there. And we should talk at some point about Australia because I don't mean to, uh, you know, to quote Elaine Bennis here, but that is real and it's spectacular. And at some point soon, oh, that wasn't Elaine Bennis. That was, uh, yeah, was. what's her name? I think it was. Sidra. I think it was. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah, was, yeah. I, I think forget. Elaine was the one that, that confirmed that. that things yeah. Were that real said they're real and they're spectacular. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying, we'll talk about Australia, which is probably four years away, but it, I think it will happen. But I, I'll just say this, Mike, when you have, one of the most influential team presidents in the NFL, Mark Donovan, say, we want to come back sooner, much sooner than the eight-year uh, minimum. You got to come over at least once every eight years and give up a home game. And so the way I look at this, Mike, I think we're going to see a better quality of game over in Europe, and we're going to see more teams say, make it about us. But I just don't see expansion or a team moving over there i just right now anyway the logistics pre supersonic transport if there was the concord that's another issue but because it takes eight and a half nine hours to get there from the middle of the united states i just think there's a lot of teams that would say we a lot of owners would say we don't want to vote for uh, multiple teams in europe right now and i am i posted 
just before the show got started about expansion. I've been talking about this all week with all the quarterback injuries, with the quality of quarterback play, with Tommy DeVito getting ready to be fed to the Cowboys on Sunday at 425 p.m. Eastern. And maybe to start the last half of the season for the yes. New York football Giants. Yes, but it begins in a game that Fox will call without irony America's game of the week. Tommy DeVito fed to the Cowboys. You can't have expansion. There aren't enough quarterbacks to go around for more than 32 teams. There aren't enough quarterbacks to go around for 32 teams as we get deeper into the season and guys get injured. Here's what I think is happening. They dangle the idea of sending a team to London, Germany, wherever from time to time. I think just to keep people interested and when the news cycle lands, when the NFL is coming, oh, did you know we may have a team here at some point? When? Well, they never quite say it, but they just say at some point in the future. Now that they're carving the league up in these slices where different teams have different dibs on different places, Peter, we are moving toward what I thought was going to happen 10, 12 years ago. It's the shrink wrap cereal box approach where London gets eight games and they're going to be different teams in every game. You get a tiny yeah. little box of Frosted Flakes. Right. You get a tiny little box of Corn Pops. You get a tiny little box of Special K. That one always got thrown away. You get a tiny or Corn Flakes or something that wasn't, you know, completely draped in sugar. That's the one that, that never got eaten. But And that was kind of like last night's game. But whatever. They'll take it. They'll take it. They'll take last night's game. They'll take Bears Panthers. They'll take what they can get. And... And with 17 games, now I don't think there's going to be 17 games for long. I think we're going to be back to 18 or up to 18 by the time we get to the next decade because the NFL is going to want more. But with 17, it's perfect because you just take one home game from the conference because it flips flops each year or flip flops as the case may be. NFC has nine home games one year. AFC has nine the next. You just make those neutral site games. Everybody's got eight. And you've got 16 neutral site games that you can put in Germany, in London, in Australia, in Argentina, in wherever you want to put them. And I think that's the track it's currently on. And when when teams like the Chiefs are ready to go back again sooner than later, well, okay, we got 16 to work with. We're sending four or five. We got 10 or 11 more that we can do. Let's just do 16 a year. And I think they're at the point where they could pull off 16 if they wanted to. We could have 9.30 a.m. football, assuming that the games are in Europe. It gets a little permanently it's a little crazy when we start going elsewhere. But in Europe, we could have 9.30 a.m. Eastern time football most Sundays of the regular season. Mike, I had this discussion. Let's transition just for a second to your thought about a lot of games overseas, okay? And I think you're on to something if, if, if the NFL can figure a way to make the 930 game a package, okay? I'm not sure it'd be 16, but I think it's entirely likely that the NFL could say, okay, we're going to put eight games on in consecutive weeks during the season. And when we reopen the media contract, we are going to try to find someone. And you say, well, who would take a 9.30 a.m. package of games? Who would take a 6.30 a.m. Pacific time game, you know, in L.A.? You know, that's what time would come on in L.A. And and I say, you know, just just think about this for a second. In the last deal, Roger Goodell and Brian Rolap and the owners, they said, you know, we're going to go to Amazon Prime. You know why we're going to Amazon Prime? Because streaming A is the future, which it is, and B... Amazon Prime is not a football network. It's not a sports network. It is a bunch of tech nerds who are going to figure out new and interesting ways to show the games. And the first evidence of that is what they are doing in their alternate Prime Vision feed right now every Thursday in which 
using artificial intelligence and the, uh, the, 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 the sensors that are built into each shoulder pad of every NFL player, they're basically predicting before the play, showing the all 22 and predicting who's going to blitz on this play. And it's totally, totally fascinating. And I am told that they're already thinking about, okay, what bell and whistle are we going to put in next year? So the NFL, in other words, didn't go out and say to ESPN, hey, let's put these Thursday night games on ESPN 2, or let's go to some other regular traditional network and say, hey, let's go to TNT and say, hey, why don't you just show the games, same crews, same everything and all that. No, I believe that when this thing opens back up, whatever year it is, I think it's 29, 28 or 29, that the NFL will seriously consider a package of 930 games. And that would be all of the Europe games in the course of the year. And Mike, just think about this. You know, there's there are places in Europe that really want the NFL to play. Like, for instance, Dublin is... Dublin desperately wants a game. Okay, we never talk about Dublin, but a Steelers game in Dublin, you're getting 90,000 people at Croke Park or wherever it is they would play. Paris. Paris could have a game as early as 2025 after the Olympics finish there next year. So, so so, So follow this. You got Dublin. You got London. Let's say four a year in London let's say, two a year in Germany. And then you've got Spain, you've got Paris, you've got Dublin, and who knows what else you have. But to me, the NFL is going to capitalize on this, and I don't think it'll be very long before we see eight games outside the United States in a given year, up from the current five. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.